And now I will be testing the easiest York field, Core 2 Quad, or at least I think it's so. So Q9505. This was actually my strongest one, I think, on uh, water cooling. It could do over 4 gigahertz in W prime with only 1.2 volts on the V core. So this should have a max multiplier of 8.5. Many of the scores are already at relatively easy FSP. Only like 540 for W prime, etc. So let's see what happens. But uh, I'll try to do my best anyways, so that I don't have to return these uh, components later on. So uh, Ashrock P45 X3 Deluxe motherboard, Kimping Cooling F1 Dark CPU container, Kimping Cooling North Bridge container with the box P45 IHS over there for safer mounting, but no uh, mounting gear whatsoever. So uh, that's just gravity on the north bridge pretty much. Two sticks of course here dominated TDX2 memory from Samo CX or Tapaka NVIDIA 6500 GT for the monitor signal with capture card as always and uh, Corsair AX1600i. So I'll start in Windows XP and Server 2003 for the signal for that stuff and validation whatsoever. So let's see what happens. I'm actually using another board for this one. The other one I used for the Q8300, it seemed a bit more weak or weaker compared to the one I used before for many of the CPUs. Very flaky at 570 and higher for Superbuy 32M. So that's definitely a Northbridge limitation or something. So I just wanna see how this goes. Can we do any higher? Memory wise, at very high FSP. Okay, this is far higher already than the previous rank one score by Ice Power, I think, for W Prime. Let's see. I didn't even bother to test any lower than this. After like 570, that score is not good. I think this has the same efficiency issue I had with one CPU. Let's see. 7765. I think Ice Power is at a bit over eight seconds. Yeah, 7671 now starts to look correct. So almost 4.9. I think he was at like, I don't know. 540 times 8.5. So like 0.4 seconds faster than ice power. When you add like 570, I need to get the uh, Northridge colder and we hang again. Okay, not very good result, some efficiency issue. Two forty eight point oh three previous stop score by Quantum eggs from South Africa from like 2014, 11 years ago, 257 point something. So only 10 seconds, 9 seconds improvement or so. I could rerun this, but there's some efficiency issue I would like to solve first. Okay, small improvement, but still not enough. There's some, I think it's with the graphics card driver, something like this. 246.2, two seconds better. Okay, needed a bit more than off bridge. Oh, so 14 gigahertz over there. So 
So 19.47 previous top score, 20.86 20 by Ice Power 798 from Germany. Okay, 10, 2, 3, 4, 0.8 seconds, over 0.8 seconds faster than previous top score. Eleven point oh six something, this is 10.234. Okay, we are getting a score. Now in 2003, it seems it's something to do with the core count, which seems very interesting to me at least. Nine minutes, maybe 26. So around one minute gain now. We are at 4.8. I tried. I tried more, but then it starts to fail, which is uh, a more normal, normal symptom, if you ask me. But it still should be able to do a bit higher, at least what I think. But good already, one minute gain or so. Damn awesome. Okay, validation will be easy, as it's only at like 4.8, 4.868, something like this. Four point. Okay, the torque validation should be relatively easy as, as it only made it like four point eight six eight. It should be like five seventy one, five seventy two. That should be it already. Minus 85 CPU, minus 70 North Bridge. Four point nine. Yeah, four point nine. And that's it. And okay, I thought about covering the Q9505 results now with the capture card as it's already uh, like mid-August of 2025 as I made these results quite soon after coming back from uh, Taiwan from Computex of this year and the G-Skill OC World Cup uh, overclocking competition when I was running these tests pretty much like in the early phases when I was running W Prime I accidentally uh, hit the chair that's next to me when I bench these old platforms or anything in general and I accidentally poured one thermos flask of LN2 on my other foot and I was only wearing socks so I had some LN2 getting in the uh, uh, in the uh, actual clothing so I actually burned like two of my toes uh, it felt quite bad so I, I went even to the hospital after running these tests because nothing can stop me. I just put like a, a small container full of warm water. I kept my other foot in that warm water and I kept benching these uh, results and I got everything even with that small accident uh, happening to me during these actual tests. So nothing can stop me but I think that shows my dedication to these old platforms and these old CPUs because I wanted to get these done but luckily nothing bad happened the uh, not very bad frostbite whatsoever it healed on its own but the lesson is you should always wear shoes or something when you run anything on liquid nitrogen because you can accidentally uh, drop a flask that's full of liquid nitrogen and it uh, because the uh, surface of the floor is too hot or too warm for the LN2 so it's pretty much like uh, hours very fast uh, in the space where you are uh, standing so it can easily absorb into any 
clothing or fiber and it can cause minor or more substantial frostbite. So either don't use anything on your feet like socks whatsoever or use shoes. I usually prefer to use shoes but as I've been running liquid nitrogen with computer parts for over 10 years you pretty much get a bit more lazy to be honest. So it can happen to anyone even a more experienced user. But uh, so if we take a look at these runs so W prime 32 like uh, around 0.4 seconds faster than ice power 798 almost 4.9 gigahertz compared to almost 4.6 gigahertz so that's definitely a substantial gain i posted these results uh, in late june although i ran these in early june because i wanted to get this video out before i went on my holiday in indonesia and thailand but i didn't have i didn't find the time so i'm now finishing or wrapping up uh, wrapping up this video and posting these on YouTube. I have other stuff coming as well. 1024 amp. I need to fix the efficiency issue so only like 11 second gain versus Quantum X so same frequency against 4.729 so 11.6 second gain almost but it's definitely all right if you ask me. Then uh, Pi Fast 19.47 it is was actually a pretty tough one i had to run this test for like three or four minutes before i got a successful run because i wanted to get under 20 seconds straight from the get-go and not just post something that's marginally better than the previous rank one score made by ice power 798 so same frequency once again and memories are definitely all right so 15 33 5, 5, 4, 15 common rate one 1M I ran pretty much straight afterwards, same memory as you can expect, 10.234 against 11.062, so almost 0.8 seconds faster, that's definitely awesome, like 260 megahertz higher on the CPU, and 32M, probably the biggest score of these all, definitely awesome efficiency. 9 minutes 26.844 against 10 minutes 25.843 so that's 59 second gain 4.8 against 4.625 so there's a lot of fine tuning that went into this score so it didn't happen with just one attempt I did many failure runs before this but I wanted to get a good run nonetheless and with the CPU model we also got the validation but it's not very easy with these CPU models because you are competing against the guys who prefer to use the gigabyte buffer boards. With the gigabyte buffer boards the bugging of the CPU is much easier. That means you can run just half of the CPU which effectively makes the CPU a dual core CPU and the FSP overclocking becomes a whole lot easier. Stay tuned, I managed to get this bug uh, working on the ASRock board with another CPU model. I will uh, show it to you later, but it's very hard to get going on the ASRock board. I think it's somewhat, something to do with the actual CPU that's being used as well. So we, we, you need to find some specific CPU that can uh, trigger the bug uh, on the ASRock board. But I think it's a, a lot more consistent on the Gigabyte motherboards. So 4.909 almost against 4.868 by Ixabyte. I don't actually know where's this guy from Germany. Actually it was made in 2024, so quite recent run. And Quantum X was made in 2014. He's from South Africa. So yeah, not very like uh, important CPU model, but like I said, I want to get all of these done. So all the e, uh, Q8300 I mean, all the Q8000 series CPUs, Q9000 series CPUs, the Core 2 Extreme variants we can run on X48 because you have unlocked multiplier, so their FSP overclocking is not the limiting factor. We only need the P45 because we are limited by the FSP with these locked uh, quad-core CPU models. But that's pretty much it. Happily, I'm definitely happy that nothing bad happened from the... Uh, small accident but it was pretty annoying the whole area felt 
like quite tingling for at least one hour after it happened. That's normally that's normal what happens if you get a tiny frostbite in a very cold winter environment, at least here in Finland when it can be pretty cold during winter time. But yeah, so be please be aware when you run liquid nitrogen for overclocking for or for what for any purpose whatsoever use shoes or something else don't fool around because it can be quite dangerous and it can happen to anyone even to a more experienced user but yeah that's pretty much it for the uh, q9505 if you like to see these uh, uh, results and you appreciate all of my efforts and my overclocking content with these older platforms and CPUs then please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel maybe check out my patreon page as well if you want to support my work and yeah thanks for watching some of my legacy overclocking content once again and I will see you on the next one